Hello everyone, the Green Scorpion here with 10 diamonds I found in the rough. The video game industry has its names that sell millions upon millions of games such as Halo, Mario, and Call of Duty. However, I find it a bit of a shame that there are a lot of games out there that are overshadowed by these names, so much that they barely experience the light of the TV screen. Now these aren't necessarily underrated games. These are games that are considered great in the eyes of reviewers or the general gaming public. However, these are also games that were overlooked mainly because the bigger names of gaming took priority in the eyes of the consumer. So today, I'm going to do these games a favor by listing the top 10 games you've probably never played. Yet. I'll be breaking these games down according to narrative, visuals and audio, replay value, content, controls, and gameplay. And as usual, only games I've played and only one per franchise. Also, if a game you think should qualify doesn't end up on this list, recommend it to me as I would really like to see what it has to offer. Alright, let's get started. Buenos dias. You're not the nurse? No. You're not here to give me my medication? I no, did. but I am here to ease your pain. Guess they couldn't save me, huh? No, but there's still a chance you could save me. The Game Boy Advance is, without a doubt, one of Nintendo's greatest creations. One of the main reasons is the game library, featuring masterpieces like Mario & Luigi, Fire Emblem, and Kirby Nightmare & Dream Land. That being said, these games do take the attention away from games like Summon Knight's Swordcraft Story. This game is unique for being a dungeon crawler with RPG and fighting game elements. The story follows Clairu or Pratty, depending on whom you choose at the beginning, and each of them are on a journey to become craft lords, master blacksmiths of the highest order. The story is very well written with great characters and character development, a good balance of humor and seriousness, as well as a plot that is both inimitable and interesting, and it can even change depending on the decisions you make throughout the game. That being said, this game has a lot of branching paths both story-wise and gameplay-wise, so playing through it once won't give you the full experience. The art style is also presented well, albeit it's a bit primitive, and the same can be said about the music. The gameplay is great too, focusing on collecting materials to forge one of five different kinds of weapons and defeating enemies and bosses in fighting game style with an RPG user interface. While these two may seem incompatible, Swordcraft Story does a surprisingly good job meshing the two. There's also the sequel simply called Summon Knight Swordcraft Story 2, and it's just as good if not better. The only downside to this game is that the gameplay does get pretty repetitive after a while but it makes it up somewhat by giving you 5 weapons to work with. This game is scarce nowadays due to its low sales during its release, but if you happen to run into it, it's worth the investment. Guess they couldn't save me, huh? No, but there's still a chance you could save me. When I was making this list, I just knew I was going to have a licensed game here. Case in point, Shrek 2. In terms of a movie-based game, I can safely say this is one of my favorites. It's a 3D-style cooperative beat-em-up that did a good job bringing the Green Giant and friends into the gaming universe. The reason behind that is because the game follows the movie very loosely, focusing on only the main plot. This allows for a lot of creative input to give the gamers a recognizable yet refreshing experience with well-delivered humor and surprisingly good writing. The characters are also portrayed very well. Of course we get the familiar faces such as Shrek, Fiona, Donkey, Puss in Boots, etc. But we also see some newcomers such as Red Riding Hood and Tinkerbell. All of the characters are unique in how they control and they utilize techniques that fit their character. Shrek is strong, Puss is nimble, Fiona is a martial artist, and so on. This is a great game to play with friends because of the co-op system and the game controls beautifully. But even if you can't get three others to play with you, this game is very well playable solo. This game does suffer from a somewhat ridiculous difficulty spike, but get past that obstacle and we get probably the greatest game that Shrek has ever been a part of. Guess they couldn't save me, huh? No, but there's still a chance you could save me. One thing I noticed is that they can pretty much make a game out of anything. Including the emergency room. Trauma Center Second Opinion is a game for the Wii developed by Atlas where you literally play Doctor. The game follows Derek Stiles, a rookie surgeon who discovers that he has a special ability that allows him to perform miracles in the OR. The idea behind this game is to perform surgery on patients in order to save their lives. What's astonishing is how realistic and accurate this game is. The terminology that is used in the game is taken straight out of the medical books, and the surgical techniques that you are called to perform match that legitimacy, 
including suturing, removing blood, and using the scalpel. The main character can also use an ability called the Healing Touch, where he enters a state of complete focus that makes time go slower. The story and writing are also to be complemented, portraying a suspense and tension-filled mood that would normally be present in a hospital. Also, many will be surprised at how well this game plays. The Wii's motion controls provide smooth gameplay, and the hit detection for the surgical tools is accurate but forgiving if you aren't spot on. Speaking of challenge, prepare to be frustrated by this game's difficulty because it is not easy. However, it's that difficulty that gives this game such an appropriate feel. As you play the game, the atmosphere provides players with a ton of anxiety and nervousness. It makes you feel like someone's life is truly on the line and it's up to you to save them. And one mistake could end it all. Now think about this. This video game is enough to give players a feeling of anxiety. Can you imagine how much more nerve-wracking it is to be a real surgeon in an actual operating room? I've played Trauma Center Second Opinion as well as New Blood and Under the Knife, which I also recommend. And that tense feeling I get has given me a newfound respect for doctors and surgeons in the real world. That alone is enough to make this game worth playing. Guess they couldn't save me, huh? No, but there's still a chance you could save me. The Ace Attorney series has made quite a name for itself in the gaming industry, and with Phoenix Wright making an appearance in Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, its popularity has only gotten stronger. However, there's one game in the series that didn't get a lot of attention, and I think I know why. Apollo Justice Ace Attorney. This game was a true success in Japan, however, that isn't the case in North America probably because Phoenix Wright isn't the main character, and Apollo is a completely new character to the series, and it sold fewer copies than the other games. That being said, I think that's a feeble excuse not to play the game. Apollo Justice Ace Attorney takes place seven years after Trials and Tribulations, and the story of the game is just as good as the other games, with writing, atmosphere, and delivery to match. The gameplay is still the classic Ace Attorney formula of investigation and courtroom procedure, but it does bring some new features to the table such as crime recreation and the Perceive system. In addition, Phoenix Wright is present as Apollo's mentor and plays a huge role in the game's story, and there's a point where he's actually playable in the game bringing back the Cyclop feature. Also, the characters in this game are incredibly well written and well developed, especially Apollo Justice and Trucy Wright. Ultimately, this game is just like the others in terms of gameplay, which is fine since the Ace Attorney series truly shines in its story and writing. If you love the Ace Attorney series, I guarantee that you will love this game. Guess they couldn't save me, huh? No, but there's still a chance you could save me. The games in the Ninja Gaiden series are infamous for being mercilessly difficult, and Ninja Gaiden Dragon Sword is no exception. Of all the Nintendo DS games out there, this one is unique in many ways. You hold a DS more like a book, and the gameplay and controls consist of traversing various areas while hacking and slashing away at enemies, performing ninjutsu, and shooting arrows all by using the touchscreen. Surprisingly, the touchscreen controls work very well, giving a fair challenge in the form of the game itself. Oh, and don't lose any sleep! While this game isn't as hard as the other Ninja Gaiden games, it's still as unforgiving as its reputation asserts. In addition, Ryu Hayabusa's character is fleshed out pretty well in this game, showing him as a merciless killing machine to his enemies and a caring and warm-hearted gentleman to his friends. There isn't really much else to say about this game, but for what it has, it can be considered one of the best DS titles out there that regrettably didn't get enough attention. Guess they couldn't save me, huh? No, but there's still a chance you could save me. Take this from someone who isn't really a huge fan of rock music. Brutal Legend is awesome! This game is probably one of the most creative and imaginative games I've ever played. The game follows Eddie Riggs, the greatest roadie in the world who is stuck with the worst band ever. Then during one of their concerts, he gets killed in an accident, but then his belt amulet transports him to the Brutal Land, where he joins a team of rockers to turn metal into the supreme form of rock and roll. First of all, I have to mention this game's visuals and presentation. The Brutal Land, inspired by several famous rock album covers, is stunning and the character, enemy, and NPC models are extremely well designed. Everything is presented in a spectacular manner, from the scenery to the battles and even the menus. I also have to compliment the gameplay. The combination of real-time strategy and action is seamless, 
allowing the player to command an army of headbangers while raising enemies with the Separator, Eddie's Axe, and Clementine, his equally awesome guitar. Brutal Legend provides so many options in terms of how you want to play the game, making it a fun and memorable experience from beginning to end. Then there's the story. As I said back during my Top 10 Musician Fighters, Brutal Legend's story is something I can't make up, and it's equally difficult to explain it. All I can say is that it's an experience that is unique, exciting, and beautifully epic. The writing plays a huge part in that as well, providing suspense, adventure, and the kind of humor that only Jack Black can deliver. If you're a fan of rock and roll, or not, this is one sick title that you don't want to miss. Guess they couldn't save me, huh? No, but there's still a chance you could save me. Considered a somewhat cult classic, Baten Kaito's Eternal Wings in the Lost Ocean is an RPG for the GameCube that became seriously overshadowed due to weak advertising. First of all, this game's story is incredibly difficult to delve into, featuring characters of a winged empire that embark on a journey to save the world and unlock their true potential. While it may seem like your average RPG story, this is one plot that will shock you with what it delivers and, despite the cheesy voice acting, is a really unique experience. The gameplay is your standard RPG, with the exception of the combat system. Using cards that correspond to each character's unique abilities and talents, this is one card battle system that actually works very well, unlike another card battle system we're all familiar with. It forces the player to coordinate each character's abilities to chain into others to dish out the most damage possible. This game also features some excellent visuals and presentation, and a soundtrack composed by Motoi Sakuraba himself. I will admit, I don't really have much to say because this game is actually really difficult to describe. All I can say is that if you truly want to know what this game is all about, pop it into the GameCube and give it a shot. You won't be disappointed. Guess they couldn't save me, huh? No, but there's still a chance you could save me. True, I haven't totally beaten this game yet, but I just have to include it. More Moss of the Demon Blade is a hack and slash platformer for the Wii that Due to such low sales, this game is rare even among the common gaming store shelf. This game follows two protagonists and each has a unique story that intertwines with the other later on. The game also follows Japanese mythology, which makes for some interesting story elements and some great boss battles. And I also love the fact that while the text is in English, they decided to keep the voice acting in Japanese. The gameplay for this game is great for anyone who likes fast-paced action. The main characters are well-trained ninjas that execute some incredibly stylish sword techniques and, depending on what blades you have equipped, you can unleash several unique secret arts that really add a significant amount of detail to the gameplay. In addition, this game brings some really exceptional features to the table such as the fullness meter that forces players to coordinate their healing items and the barrier system to keep players from going where they shouldn't. This game also possesses many admirable tropes in terms of video games and media in general. Multiple endings, multi-mook melee, the boss rush, the ensemble dark horse, mano a mano, this game even got breakable weapons right. I currently have a let's play on my channel of this game, but I would highly recommend searching this game out, for it is well worth finding it. Lastly, this game has probably some of the best visuals and audio ever on the Wii. I love this game! Guess they couldn't save me, huh? No. But there's still a chance you could save me. Wii Sports Resort and The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword are two games that truly utilize the Wii Motion Plus by providing true one-on-one -on -one sword swinging action. However, there is one game that's hiding behind these masterpieces that's waiting to be played. Red Steel 2. I will admit, the first Red Steel really botched this game's reputation. But despite a mediocre predecessor, Red Steel 2 took everything that Red Steel did wrong and made it right. Thanks to the Wii Motion Plus, the gameplay and controls are crisp, clean, and tons of fun, allowing the player to slash and slice through their enemies with deadly swings and sword techniques, as well as blasting through the crowd with equally awesome gunslinging action. The visuals in this game are stunning and the presentation is spectacular, combining the theme of the old Wild West with feudal Japan seamlessly. Much like Muramasa the Demon Blade, this game doesn't focus on realistic graphics and instead focuses on presenting a refined and appealing art style which ultimately gives this game a much more intense feel. Also, just as I mentioned in my Top 10 Sword Wielders list, the main character, the Kusagari, is an unmatched sword master in the video game universe. Lastly, I have to give compliments to the game's story. 
While this game isn't necessarily huge, it has a very detailed and well-presented story that focuses around the Kusagati's difficult past. What's also interesting is that at first the Kusagati seems like just another merciless badass who can take on anyone, but the game acknowledges that he does feel fear and pain. He just doesn't show it. Ubisoft has made plenty of amazing games like No More Heroes and Prince of Persia, but Red Steel 2, despite low sales and popularity, I believe stands as one of their best works. Alright, let's do the old recap before we get to number 1. Number 10, Summon Knight Swordcraft Story. Number 9, Shrek 2. Number 8, Trauma Center Second Opinion. Number 7, Apollo Justice Ace Attorney. Number 6, Ninja Gaiden Dragon Sword. Number 5, Brutal Legend. Number 4, Baten Kaitos Eternal Wings and the Lost Ocean. Number 3, More Master the Demon Blade. And number 2, Red Steel 2. I'll be leaving here soon enough. No thanks to dead and no commission low life cases like yours, Minso. There are a lot of bad games out there that, for some reason, become more popular and more successful than games like the ones presented on this list. The way I see it, marketing is the problem. Companies that create these sorry excuses for games are apparently expert marketers, which result in their games sucking the attention away from the gems that truly deserve it. As a result, the general video game consumer leaves games like Botan Kaitos, Brutal Legend, and Muramasa in the dust without even a second thought. Number one is the epitome of this dejected fact. Psychonauts! I find it strange that this game has a great reputation in the eyes of reviewers and the general gaming public, yet barely anyone has played it! The game follows the story of Rasputin, a 10-year-old boy with psychic powers. Throughout the game, the player is drawn into a creative world and the story is incredibly well written, incorporating humor, adventure, culture, and tragedy. The visuals are also a plus, having a design all its own. The game has you traveling between the mental worlds of different characters in the game and each of them have incredibly unique and interesting designs. In addition, the characters in this game are well written, well acted, and their designs look like they were inspired by the likes of Pablo Picasso, which is always a plus. Then there's the gameplay that utilizes Raz's psychic abilities. While mobility is done through basic controlling, Raz learns several psychic techniques throughout the game that really puts a fun twist on the gameplay, including marksmanship, pyrokinesis, and confusion. That being said, the player had better be prepared to learn these techniques well, because the game is quite challenging from the enemies to the boss battles. This game is spectacular and it has been deemed the greatest unsuccessful game in video game lore. So why haven't people played it? While big-name titles are hogging the spotlight and well-marketed atrocities hog up the leftover attention, games like these are shamefully neglected and forgotten. That is something I cannot accept. These games deserve attention, so if any of the mentioned games interest you, what are you waiting for? Go and find them and give them a shot, from Trauma Center to Apollo Justice to the number one greatest game you've probably never played yet, Psychonauts. I'm the Green Scorpion, until next time. Ever cheated on your husband? Mr. Calavera, there's no ring on my finger. There's no skin on it either. I guess you'll just have to trust me then.